Hey Golden Bears, you're watching Cal TV Sports Behind the Hype. Today we're introducing a new segment called Afternoon Tea with Brandon Lee. And if you haven't guessed it, yeah, that's me. In these segments, I'm going to be sitting down with some of our distinguished Cal athletes and we're going to be chatting over a nice cup of tea and some pastries baked by yours truly. Today I'm going to be in interviewing Emily Boyd of the California's women's soccer team. Stay tuned and peace up. Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, on a, you're my first guest on Afternoon Tea with Brandon Lee. How are you? Great, how are you? I'm, I'm caffeinated now. <laughs> <laughs> so you just wrapped up your final season here at Cal and you accumulated a lot of hardware and achieved a lot of accolades. You just got named Pac-12 Goalkeeper of the Year. You are third all-time in Pac-12 history with 36 career shutouts. You are the all-time career saves leader in California history with 297. And you just got named an All-American. What can you say contributes to your success on the field? Um, I would say I started becoming really successful when I got fitter and I incorporated more on the field workouts, off the field workouts um, into my game. So it's not all just about going to practice every day and trying as hard as you can. It's about everything you do after that. So it's okay, I'm gonna go to practice, I'm gonna beat Brooke, I'm gonna beat Liv, I'm gonna try and do everything I can every day to beat them, that's my goal. I wanna beat them and every day I can't. And so those days are the days that I really wanna go out and get after it on my own and do more, whether it be play more, whether it be go run, go do yoga, or just do something more so I can feel like I have won that day. So there are so many renowned female soccer players out there from Abby Wambach to Hope Solo to California alum Alex Morgan. Who would you say is your role model and why? I would say on the field my role model has always been my sister. Um, she was in a totally different situation than I was in high school. She tore ACL as a junior and was recovering in her senior year she hadn't committed yet and she committed late to Washington and had this whole freshman year where the first half she didn't play and then the second half she started and from then on she never left the field. So watching that as a high school soccer player was really inspiring to see that she could go on this team, start with little to no scholarship and then become one of their greatest assets like ever. So it was really cool to see that not only being my sister, but being my role model because I knew that no matter where I started, I could always go up seeing that in my household. So that would be my role model on the field. And I would have to ask, was there like a little sibling rivalry between you and your sisters? And she is also, is she a goalie as well? No, she's a center back. Okay. okay. But she does motivate you a lot because yeah. I know you never <clears throat> skipped a minute in your California uh, career, correct? Yeah, um, there's been rivalries just because she played at the University of Washington, but we're four years apart, so we never got to play against each other, sadly. That would've been great yeah. to see, yeah. That would've been so fun. So when we play UW, she is a little neutral, but other than that, she's like just rooting for us the whole rest of the season. Yeah, brilliant. So you just wrapped up your final season in a California uniform. What can Cal fans expect next? Because I heard some rumors you're going to the draft. Are you excited for it? Where's your like dream destination? Uh, yeah, I'm going to the draft. Um, it's January 18th in My Philly. Birthday. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And I think that we're going to go to the draft, me and a teammate. Um, yeah, I obviously I would love to play in Seattle because that's where I'm from. I love the team. Um, but I think that if I get an opportunity to play anywhere, I'll be really excited. I'm all about going new places, trying new things, so I think that anywhere would be a great place to go. And I'm trying to maybe play for Canada. We'll see. I don't, I don't know that's in the works, but I'm excited. All right. We're going to be cheering for you on January 18th. Hopefully you have uh, safe travels over there. All right, Emily, finally, we have to talk about your Instagram page on food and fitness because, one, I have something for you. I actually followed one of your recipes. It's <laughs> pumpkin, banana, walnut bread. Um, it looks like... It looks nice. Thank you. Woo! It didn't come out so nicely, but hopefully I will get I'll some of your reviews. 
How is it? Is it too dense? Not great? It's good. I've never used... I would recommend not full walnuts. Like not full walnuts. Okay. Other than that, A+. Plus. Yes. Success. Success. All right. So let's talk about the page. What motivated you, mo what motivated you to start this page? Um, well, actually, it was one of my roommates told me that she didn't want to see my food on Snapchat every day. And she was like, I don't want to see your food on Snapchat. You need to like start something. And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. Maybe I'll start an Instagram page. And then I started this page and I really like making food look pretty. So at first I would post pictures and my teammates would be like, that's not very pretty. <laughs> and so my goal was to start making healthy food look better because I always try and convince my friends that all these weird foods that I make are actually good. So that meant I had to make it look good. And so when I started working with all the healthy food, then it went to the fitness. And I was like, this is gonna be my food and fitness. And then I started sharing stories about my life and my journey through all of this fitness stuff. And people really started like catching on and following. So yeah, shout out to my roommate G for not liking my snap stories. <laughs> Well, we have to thank G because you have more than 1,500 now. You have 2,400 followers, I believe, and counting. Yeah. So um, what can we expect to see next on um, your Instagram page? Um, well, I'm doing Whole30, which means no dairy, no wheat, no alcohol, no added sugar, and no legumes. So all my meals are surrounded by that. Um, and so probably another Whole30 recipe. Okay, I will be sure to follow because um, this is my first time trying something sugarless. Yeah. And it still tastes very, very good. I yeah, say. it's yeah. sweet. Yeah. Not everything great. needs added sugar. That is true. Since the holiday season is coming up, do you have any e boys food friendly dishes that I can make on December 25th? Um, well, I would say for the holidays, good ways to make dishes sweet, like if you're trying to make desserts would be bananas. Bananas are sweet and you don't have to add sugar since I'm doing no sugar. And for any specific meals, I would suggest following Evoid's food and you'll get to see lots of hopefully holiday dishes for you to make. All right, you hear that Count fans? Be sure to go on Instagram and follow at Evoid's food. Emily, thank you so much for joining us today uh, and being my first guest on this segment. Count fans, thank you for tuning into this episode of Behind the Hype. Reporting live at Edwards Stadium, I'm Brandon Lee. I'm Emily Boyd. Go, Go Bears! Bears. <laughs>